And welcome back, Gamer Nation. SK is here with another episode of Law and Order Legacies. Let's continue on and see what's going to happen now. Oh, we're in the Superior Court. I guess we're going to go with this. Thank you for joining us today, Franklin. As Mr. Bedford's only surviving son, it can't be easy for you to testify against him, especially in the murder of your brother. That's how strongly I believe he's guilty. Okay. Franklin, please tell the court what Giles Bedford, your father... <laughs> Giles is up there about to fall asleep. He looks drugged up. He didn't like her. At dinner later, he said to me, she's a gold-digging tramp. Why would he think that? Dad didn't feel Allison came from the right background. Uh, yes. Allison said that way before. Rachel Trevino's blog said the same information. Tag and Allison confirmed this in their video. Dr. Markovich and Allison both confirmed this. Dr. Markovich and Scott Leonard. Oh, the doctor said it too, so this one, right? I gotta win this case. This is the big one. So, safe to say, at the time of the shooting, there was no love lost between Giles Bedford and Allison Conway. Yeah, that's right. This dude looks like my dad before he married my mom. It's scary. Your brother Harrison. What were his plans around the time of the murder? He was going to go to college. Get into the firm, become the next CEO, probably. That's what my dad wanted for him. And did the plans change when he found out Allison was pregnant? Yeah. He told me he wanted to drop out and live with her. He said this was the perfect time to escape Bedford Castle, as he called it. Bedford Objection, Castle. Objection, Your Honor. This is hearsay. Regrettably, we can't cross-examine the victim to establish the... What's the wrong with the sides of all their noses? Sustained. Miss Carmichael, try and find another tack with this witness. Yes. I'm not giving up. I have him testify about something else and told him directly. Argue that Harrison made a dying declaration. No, oh, it's not time for that. And he didn't he wasn't the one who did that. Confront Franklin about this bogus hearsay. Confront for what? Make Franklin display his hands to show he's not Oh my god! They made this one. There's like two that are okay, but then let's do this. Franklin, did Allison Conway tell you anything about the situation? Uh, yeah, actually. We were pretty close, back then anyway. She said she and Harrison were planning on getting a place. He was going to go to City College, and she was going to finish up high school and look after the baby. No. And as for Giles Bedford? She told me she was afraid of what he would do when he found out. Oh. Oh, well, I guess we'll pick Giles. How would you describe your relationship with your father? <laughs> Strained, Miss Carmichael. I found myself pointing a gun at his head not too awfully long ago. Why? Because I believe he killed my brother Harrison. And I believe that his position of privilege and wealth has kept him from justice. Your Honor, how is this relevant to the murder of Harrison Bedford? It's not. Rein it in, Counselor. Franklin, why don't you tell us what kinds of behavior your father displayed back in those days? Well, he was stressed out about the firm, and then about Harrison's future. He would get real dark at dinner, then go pop a Banaxaline and chase it with gin. Objection! This witness is not the defendant's doctor. How could he possibly know what medication his father was on? <sighs> yeah, we're going to challenge this. We have to. How would he... You know what medicines your parents are taking. Have Franklin describe how he identified the medication. Oh, God. This is going to bring this out. I bet the kids took it, too. Have Franklin testify about the medical training. Argue that Franklin is authorized to access father medical. Make Franklin take a pill and watch this. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. He probably used to say. Franklin, can you tell the court how you knew your father was taking Banaxaline? Um, little orange pills with the word Banaxaline on them? Dead giveaway, Miss Carmichael. No. Oh. Sit down! <laughs> anyway, sometimes it helped, sometimes it just made him crazier. Dad's an addict, whether he wants to admit it or not. Oh. Benaxaline, a drug with known side effects that include bouts of uncontrollable rage and even, in the most extreme cases, murder. People submit a case study of Benaxaline and its links to aggression and violence. Now, while under the influence of this unpredictable medication and finding out Allison was pregnant, he would have gone ballistic, right? No, Objection. He, yeah. Calls for speculation. That's true. It's his own father. Are you saying Franklin can't imagine how his own father would have reacted? 
Speculation is speculation, counselor. Leave it alone. Yeah, I was gonna say. Withdrawn. Franklin, from everything you witnessed about your father's mood and behavior, do you believe he's capable of killing his own son? Yes, Miss Carmichael, I do. He's a tyrant. A man obsessed with wealth and his family status. And I believe he's mentally unstable. So yes, I think he killed my brother. Thank he you. killed my no brother. She <laughs> was mistaken. Oh man. Oh man, that wrestled my jimmies. <laughs> oh, okay. I hope I get this shot at him now. Yes! Mr. Bedford. May I call you Franklin? Yeah. Mr. Bedford is my father. This is quite an accusation you've leveled against your own father, even. Tell us, do you have any proof? Do I need proof, man? Isn't that what this whole trial is for? No, I don't have proof. But the people of New York do. So you don't have proof? How many times are you going to ask this question? Objection. Asked and answered, relevance, badger. Yeah, asked and answered. Asked and answered. Sustained. You testified a lot about your father's state of mind, but you also said that you don't have a very close relationship with him. Wait a minute, I said it wasn't good. I never said it wasn't close. Too close for comfort, if you ask me. Noted. When was the last time you spoke to your father? Uh -oh. Um, well, we met. It was... It was right when he had his heart attack. I was the one who took him to the hospital. Oh, so if you thought he was guilty, why not let him die right there? You were eager enough to kill him later. I... I guess I felt guilty. You did? Why? I might very well have caused it. The heart attack. We argued. See, I accused him and he... It was intense. What kind of son are you anyway? Scruffy looking... Oh, lady. badgering. Your father in his old age like that? Objection. Being a dick. Can I say that? Your Honor, this is off the charts badgering right here. Agreed. Mr. Vance, keep it civil. Yeah, it could Sorry, be a dick. Sorry, Your Honor. There's just nothing worse than an ungrateful son. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Objection. He's still badgering. Honor, seriously? Try that one more time, and I will bounce you out of this courtroom, Mr. Vance. Apologies. Oh, what a Let's douche. Let's go back to the time of the murder. <laughs> you say your father was angry with your brother, and so he killed him. Interesting theory, but who else was angry with Harrison? I don't follow you. Didn't you have a crush on Allison Conway? Weren't you jealous of your brother? Yes, but, but no. You're twisting it. You loved Allison Conway, and you killed your own brother in a jealous rage. What? No, we already had that Objection. case. Ask the answer, badgering argument. Yeah, he's just arguing. Here's the question here. Sustained. Tell us, Franklin. Weren't you jealous enough of your brother to kill him? <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> I did not kill my brother. I loved him. I idolized him. I wanted Allison, sure, but, but I would never have hurt Harrison to have her. So you had a problem with Harrison's relationship, but not enough to resort to murder. Yes, that's right. Seems reasonable. And I imagine your father would probably say the exact same thing. No further questions. Oh, that hurt. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Trevino. You are here to tell the court about your association with the late Mr. Frank Vincenzo and to testify to what he told you before he died. That's right. Mr. Vincenzo knew he was dying when he took you into his confidence, correct? Yeah. He got diagnosed with terminal cancer. Only had a few months left. Guess he needed to get some stuff off his chest. Can you tell the court what you knew about Frank Vincenzo Jr.? Yeah, tell him. Well, he was a guy from the building. An older guy. My dad warned me never to cross him. I got the idea he was connected. So when we started talking, he told me what he did. And what was that? He was a hitman, Mr. Cutter. And his a weapon hit man. Shotgun. Whoa! No! No! He said 9mm. The shotgun, if it's even over, at least the piano wire. Mickey had ever assist you, like 9mm, Mickey said. Nine millimeter. You sure? Uh, no, you're right, Mr. Cutter. It was a nine mil. He gave you one of those weapons, didn't he? That's correct. 
And the weapon he gave you to help your father shoot Alexander Baran was the same weapon used to shoot Harrison Bedford in 1998. Oh. Did Mr. Vincenzo describe the crime to you? Yeah, he told me how it happened. He tracked the kids through the park. And what year was this? 1998. 1998. Yes! Yes! The year of the Central Park murder. And what time of day? Uh, it was a weekend. Lunchtime, I think. Oh, I thought it was at night. I don't think it was day. <sighs> Raining, 911, it's 2 a.m. The video showed the murder at night. Allison told Liddy Briscoe that she remembered the orange lamp. Okay, this has no bearing on that. I don't know who Van Buren is. This video has nothing to do with it. And this has Allison and Lenny's dead, though. But it does mention Central Park. Yes. Really? Uh, no, no, hang on. I remember now. It was late afternoon, uh, around dark. Yeah. <laughs> really? Did Mr. Vincenzo describe any specifics of the crime? Anything to help authenticate his testimony? Well, he, he shot the boy first, two times. The first hit him in the stomach, and then the second round went right through his heart. He said he made the girl lie down, face down, and then he shot her in the head, sort of from the side. Why is she standing up? She survived. Yeah, that's consistent. Fontana told Curtis and Oh, Fontana! No! Curtis had been sent to Cafe Kim. Curtis told Benson at the hot dog stand. I remember us talking about a hot dog stand. Allison Conway shot in the head while lying prone on the ground. Crime scene analysts confirmed this, and most important, it was a detail the police kept out of the press. Only a witness could have known. Now, Mr. Trevino, the $64,000 question. Who hired Frank Vincenzo Jr. to kill Harrison Bedford? <laughs> Actually, you got your facts wrong, Mr. Cutter. What? Frankie told me he got hired to kill the girl, not the boyfriend. So what happened? The guy attacked Frankie, there was a fight, and both kids ended up shot. And who hired him? He told me it was Giles Bedford. Oh, code chills. No, it's not true. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Yeah, like I said, it went all wrong. Oh man, that raised the that raised the hair up on my arm. <laughs> Ooh, oh, mmm. Wow. I think I'm gonna end the episode there because uh, I like to fuck with you all. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I, oh, I got goosebumps and hair raises. I will see you all next time. Good night, gamers.